Now on to today's topic and speaker. Uh, as I mentioned, Dr. Karen Elliott is a senior instructor and the Public Health Undergraduate Internship Coordinator at the OSU College of Public Health and Human Sciences. Karen, I did a little, did a little Googling of you uh, before, oh no. <laughs> before we started today. And I love knowing that you've been at the college since 2003, since it was a department of- Yes, I, I'm actually an alum. I got my PhD at OSU. I love it. PhD in uh, health promotion, health education at the time, uh, yeah. slightly different name these days. But all of your career, you've been focusing on field work experiences and internships. So uh, we're just delighted to have you share your experience and expertise with us today. I am going to mute myself, turn my video off, and turn it over to you. Great. Thank you so much, Allison, for the wonderful introduction. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and bring up my first slide. And I appreciate everybody for taking the time to join me today. I'm really excited. I also, um, just to emphasize Allison's points, I really wanna thank the Alumni Association and the Foundation and our College of Public Health and Human Sciences. I know a lot of people um, worked really hard to get this put together and I hope it's gonna be really beneficial. I'm really excited because um, in terms of public health careers, there are so many different areas in which you can go. And so I'm excited to um, give you some information. And I always think it's helpful to provide an agenda for what I'm gonna talk about. And this might help you to get a sense of um, what I'm gonna cover and hopefully you'll have some questions for me. So I'm gonna um, briefly um, talk about last week's webinar with what is public health and then I'm going to go through the different areas of public health which I think can be helpful depending on where you're at if you're thinking about changing careers if you're a student um, deciding on majors um, it's helpful to go through the different areas of public health and then um, I'm going to talk about some different careers that are possible in public health and then I'm going to talk about skill sets, education, experiences that can be helpful that might um, be in your background. And then um, I think it's most helpful to talk about some examples of jobs. And most of you are probably within the area of Oregon or an, a neighboring state. And so I've stayed a little bit local <laughs> with my jobs and then um, definitely um, Q&A. And as Allison had mentioned, I do the internships and I, I've worked a lot with undergrad and graduate students. And um, I'm really, really passionate about um, talking about careers, talking about um, different areas that are options for public health because there are so many different opportunities. And I just want to briefly touch back on um, the webinar that Dr. Boberg covered with Public Health 101. And, if you weren't able to catch that, it was a phenomenal webinar and hopefully you are able to. And he did a great job of talking about what is public health. Um, he went through different areas. And so if you didn't catch it, um, please make sure to go back to the Public Health Insider webpage um, to view that because I'm gonna dive right into um, the different areas of careers. and. Um, I also want to make this relevant to all of you, depending on where you're at and what you're thinking of in terms of public health, if you, if you want to go into it as a career or you want to get involved. Um, I think the, the way I see it is it's really helpful just to think of the different areas of public health because that will then um, align with different positions. And I'll go through that down the road with specific jobs, but um, I went off of the MPH tracks um, that are offered because that does a great job of dividing public health into the different areas. And so the first one is environmental and occupational health. And this one uh, is up and coming where there are a lot more jobs now in this area and they're focused a little bit more on the occupational health side. Um, in terms of health and safety. There are a lot of um, organizations that are now hiring for 
um, health and safety specialists. Um, you can also go into different environmental health problems. A lot of students have decided to go into water quality, um, a lot of different areas within the realm of environmental health. Um, health management policy is a great area. That is more in terms of, it can either be management or policy. A lot of people who go in this area decide to go into administration at a clinic, a hospital. Um, Long-term care is an area that is booming as far as jobs and um, administration. Policy can go the route of government to being a policy analyst, um, diving into different policies. And I do have an ex example of a job in this area that we'll cover. Um, epidemiology, which I think a lot of people that have been really focused looking in terms of COVID-19 have um, really gotten an interest in epidemiology and that's um, surveillance of diseases, um, uncovering clues about disease and injury. And I have a job on that area as well. Um, global health, which a lot of people are interested in, in terms of working abroad, um, working with underrepresented populations, um, helping with health disparities. Health promotion, which is um, my background, that's an area that is um, actually booming right now. And um, the growth is actually expected to be above average within the next few years. And that's understanding social and behavioral influences with communities and social determinants of health. And that area can go in many different ways as far as jobs, can be everywhere from nonprofits to um, government agencies. Um, biostatistics, which anybody out there that loves data, <laughs> this would be your um, niche where um, you would be using data to address um, health problems, public health problems. So in terms of careers, some of you might not be familiar with public health. Some of you might already been, be in public health careers. I think it's helpful to um, just talk about some of the different positions that are out there. And it can be everything from a community health worker to um, a health promotion specialist, which could be at a health department, um, at actually a hospital, clinics. Um, a public health nurse, I put that because a lot of you might have clinical backgrounds or might be thinking of a, a clinical um, career, and that pairs nicely with public health. A lot of people will go on to get nursing degrees, um, medical, medical degrees, and then combine it with public health to then tackle community health problems. Um, a healthcare administrator at a hospital, a clinic, um, long-term care, health policy analyst, epidemiologist, and then occupational health and safety specialist. And that just gives you an idea of some of the positions that are out there, especially if you're new to public health. And I also like to um, talk about what are some of the, who are some of the top employers? And again, I'm sticking a little bit local, but um, any hospitals, if you're in different states, OHSU is a very strong partner of ours. And for those of you that are thinking of um, getting degrees, they're a strong partner for internships. And then a lot of students are able to get jobs from OHSU. Um, that can be at the undergrad and graduate level. So for MPH students, OHSU, um, they usually have some phenomenal opportunities. Um, a lot of them can be more in administration. So if you're interested in the administrative side, um, OHSU um, would be a great option. In Corvallis, Samaritan Health Services is a phenomenal organization. We have a great partnership with them. Um, they have health promotion students that will work on um, chronic conditions and they will increase in awareness and education within communities um, on different chronic diseases. Susan G. Coleman is a wonderful partner there up in Portland and 
we've had a lot of students go on to get jobs with them. They do a lot of community awareness. Those of you that might be interested in underrepresented populations, um, they've done a lot of outreach to the Hispanic and Latino population. American Heart Association, they're a phenomenal organization and um, they do a lot of outreach with schools in terms of prevention. And it, um, a lot of health promotion students will kind of gravitate towards them. Um, Oregon Health Authority, if any of you out there are interested in being a health policy analyst, um, Oregon Health Authority is a great option. Um, Benton County Health Department, I put them um, because they're just an example of a health department, but all health departments are wonderful with any different area that you're interested in going in. And then um, in terms of government, there's also Veterans Affairs and any state um, at the government level would be a great employer. Educational institutions, if you are more advanced and you're thinking of perhaps getting a doctorate, a PhD, and teaching or doing research, educational institutions are wonderful. Um, if you are thinking about getting an MPH and working with a college population, um, Student Health Services has been a great employer for um, people with MPHs doing outreach within um, college populations on different health issues, um, nonprofits, including American Lung Association, March of Dimes. Um, a lot of nonprofits end up hiring our students as well. And then large business, businesses and corporations. And I like to give the examples of Amazon and Intel. And they hire a lot of students that are coming out with um, a background in environmental and occupational health and safety. And a lot of businesses that are non-public health are really focused on um, bumping up their worksite wellness programs and also hiring more people, especially now with COVID-19, in terms of um, monitoring health and safety, running the programs, um, providing trainings. And now there's more regulations in terms of um, PPE. So a lot of businesses and corporations are looking to hire um, people with public health backgrounds. Um, in terms of education, and again, this depends on where everybody's at, but it, a lot of um, people are able to take their backgrounds existing with transferable skills. And if you already have a bachelor's, um, um, MPH could be a good option. O OSU offers a, a graduate certificate in public health. Um, they also, we also offer a community health worker training program. And that job, being a community health worker, is actually increasing. Um, the projection over the next 10 years shows that that particular job is going to increase above average. So um, OSU offers a great program in that. Um, we have our bachelor's degrees in, right now, health promotion and health management policy. There's also a minor in environmental and occupational health and safety. And those are great fits. Um, a lot of students are able to get entry level positions and then narrow down their interests to go back to get MPHs. Again, if you are more advanced and you're thinking of a PhD, um, there, we have wonderful PhD programs as well that are more focused on teaching and research if that's um, an option for you. And again, kind of going back to the transferable skills, I always like to um, bring this up because sometimes um, background past experiences can supplement for education. And there's a lot of leadership skills, a lot of transferable skills that organizations are looking to in terms of qualifications. And, I like to um, bring up the National Association of Colleges and Employers. They do a survey every year and they survey um, a large number of employers within the United States to ask them, what are the most employable skills that you are seeking? And um, the top five, and these shift from year to year, but 
they pretty much stay the same with teamwork, leadership, problem solving, initiative, and communication, which includes written and verbal. So, um, so a lot of times people's backgrounds, uh, I've had students that will come with a lot of work experience and then they'll decide to do a, a career change and um, their past positions can really still give them a lot of experience when applying for jobs. So if you're there where you are maybe thinking of switching your career, um, I, a, a lot of times the background, your background experiences can really still be relevant. Um, and then there are jobs, internships, which don't have to be for academic credit. They can be for picking up experience in public health. Um, fellowships, I'm gonna give an example of a fellowship. And then just involvement. Um, just being involved, I brought up some organizations that are great to get involved in. American Public Health Association, um, they have many different opportunities to get involved and they have an annual conference. And this year it's virtual, so um, that might actually allow more people to um, decide to attend it. And then Oregon Public Health Associ Association, and then if you're in a different state, every state has a different chapter um, of American Public Health Association. So if you're in, you're in another state like Washington, I would suggest looking up Washington Public Health Association. Um, they can provide some local opportunities to get involved. And the other thing I like to point out is if you are um, kind of interested in looking at for jobs, if you already are, are already in public health, um, Oregon Public Health Association has a job board. They also have an internship board if you're interested in gaining experience. And again, it doesn't have to be tied to an academic program. So I always like to recommend them because they're phenomenal organizations. And now I think it's helpful in talking about jobs and uh, the title with this webcast with public health careers, um, the world needs you. I think it's really helpful to talk about specific jobs that are out there so you can get an idea of what might be a good fit and what positions are asking for. And so I, I like to bring up a fellowship to start with, and this is a fellowship that actually is remote for this year. And this would be really great for somebody that is maybe thinking of getting back into public health or um, has been out of their degree for a while. Um, it's just required to be within five years of having a bachelor's degree or master's degree. And a lot of positions, um, if you start looking at different jobs within public health, it's really common for them to talk about degrees in terms of, it could say public health, health, health services, human services related discipline. So it can be very broad in terms of the degree. And a fellowship is, they're typically for one year and they are meant to give people um, the opportunity to gain experience before um, applying for jobs. So it, this one is geared towards health policy and it's also geared towards maternal and child health programs. And I, I didn't post the large um, position because it's very extensive and I wanted to stay with my PowerPoint but um, some of the duties within this fellowship include tracking state level policy and system trends. And also because of COVID, um, there's a lot more interest right now in telehealth. And so um, identifying the gaps related to telehealth, developing options to promote um, state level policy. And again, this involves telehealth assisting with publishing products. And this can be helpful, again, for somebody that is hoping to really build their career in public health. So if you have some um, publications that can really help them when applying for jobs. Participating in the development and impl implementation of meetings, forums. Um, this can be a great way to gain experience. So if you're 
if you have a degree already and you're not quite there where you want to apply for jobs in public health, I would really recommend looking up fellowships. Um, Kaiser per Permanente is also a really good organization that often offers fellowships. And again, they're typically for one year. Another example of a job, and this is one that would be um, geared towards health promotion. And a lot of insurance companies will hire health promotion um, specialists. This one is entitled health engagement specialist. And it's tied to OHSU. And it is um, asking for a bachelor's with four years of experience. One thing to note, if you are interested in, in looking into the jobs in public health, a lot of them will use language to say a bachelor's degree and four years experience or um, two years of college experience and two years of work experience. They can give a lot of different options. So um, I know a lot of times people are worried about the years of experience. The other thing is it never hurts if you're in the ballpark to apply because a lot of um, organizations are very flexible. So um, they often see education, internships, volunteering as um, experience. So that can substitute if you don't have, in this, in this case, four years of experience. Um, so this is a typical health promotion type of position where it would be conducting assessments, needs assessments within a certain population to identify um, and address social determinants of health. So this position would be focused on um, developing interventions around um, doing an assessment, finding out the results of the needs assessment to identify within that population, what are the most pressing needs that those people identify. And it could be um, chronic disease, it could be infectious disease, it could be stress management. Um, but a lot of health promotion specialists will do needs assessments to identify what is important to this group of people and then identify an appropriate intervent intervention. And then um, providing education and guidance um, around social determinants of health. And a big one within health promotion is doing evaluation. And a lot of companies are interested in having health promotion specialists and people with health promotion training because um, they've been trained in evaluation and it's helpful to see if the program is getting the results that people are hoping. And another thing I really wanna mention with health promotion is for those of you that might have a background in it, um, it including a bachelor's, sometimes there are things you can do instead of going on to get a graduate degree. And health promotion has something that is um, the Certified Health Education Specialist, and it's known as CHES. If some of you have been out in the field for a long time and have five or more years of experience, there's the Master CHES, the MCHES, and um, that gives you a certification, and a lot of companies are looking for that. And so you could essentially get a certification and wait on getting a graduate degree. And so health promotion, if a lot of you are interested in the job market, um, it would be great to go to the um, Bureau of Labor Statistics. And at the end of my presentation, I'll have a list of resources that will get posted. And I have the website for the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And that can be helpful to see what the job outlook is for different um, jobs within public health. And I do want to mention that health promotion is one that is seen within the next 10 years as growing significantly above average. So if those of you that maybe are not in public health and you're thinking, what are some areas that are going to be in demand? Um, health promotion is one that is seen as increasing. And if you're interested in more about social determinants of health, and um, hearing more about that, as Allison mentioned at the beginning, um, Dr. Carrie Lynn Sakuma 
is going to do her webcast next week at this time at 12 on um, factors that impact your health outcomes. So definitely want to come back and see her. Um, so another job I wanted to um, post, which kind of goes along with any health and safety position, this would be perfect for anybody that's interested in environmental and occupational health and safety. And this is another area that is just going to be growing in demand. And a lot of it does have to do with COVID-19, but it, it's also with a lot of companies that need to um, make sure that they're abiding by regulations with OSHA and um, providing trainings for their employees. And so um, this is actually a manufacturer of mattresses. And I, I looked them up and they have an office um, in the Portland area. And the reason I picked this job, it's a very current job that's out there. And um, the reason I picked it is it specifically mentions um, PPE. And I think a lot of organizations are going to be wanting to hire health and safety specialists um, to follow regulations associated with social distancing, PPE, and um, COVID-19. With um, these jobs, and I did notice Amazon within Oregon is also hiring with health and safety. And if you're in that area, I do want to mention, because I want to be able to address where people are at. If, you're, if you happen to be in that area, there are a lot of positions for a supervisor, manager, more high level. So if you're more advanced in your career and you're looking for the next step, um, a lot of companies are looking for health and safety um, managers and supervisors, and that's more advanced. And um, this is um, the environment and environmental and occupational health and safety is also listed in the job market. And um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics would be a great website to go to um, to look at salary ranges. I didn't put the salary ranges on here because it really depends on each person's background and experience. And most companies will give a range and it's based on experience. So if, if you really are curious about salaries, I would say to go to that um, link that I'll provide with the Bureau of Labor Statistics. With this job, it's also providing trainings, um, providing um, suggestions on improvements for safety, um, leading safety committee meetings. This one is more entry level, and it says two to, years, two to three years experience, but it really doesn't specify um, the area. So it could be broadly within environmental and occupational health. So if um, you're just starting out or you're interested in um, an area that will in be increasing, this is a great area. And um, a lot of my students that do an EOH minor really decide to go in this route. And the lumber industry, construction companies, those are big employers of um, health and safety specialists. So one more, I think I have a couple more jobs. Um, one is an epidemiologist, and I posted this one because, and this one is for Washington State. And those of you that are thinking of being employed within a state, like state of Oregon, state of Washington, something that they'll do is um, they'll have different levels. So epidemiologist one, two, three, and then senior. And in this case, epidemiologist one is entry level. And this one actually requires no experience, but a master's in epidemiology, or it says um, an MPH with a certain amount of courses in epidemiology and biostatistics. Um, then, of course, if you're more advanced, epidemiology two, um, three, and then the senior epidemiologists are the higher level positions. And this one specifically is related to COVID-19. And so if a lot of you got interested in public health because of COVID-19. Um, epidemiology is a field that is hiring um, to be able to um, do surveillance and tracking of COVID-19 cases within um, that particular state. So if you're in a different state, um, this is a, a, a position that will be increasing 
because of COVID-19. I've seen a lot of physicians, um, both in Oregon and Washington, that for the epidemiologist one, that one is a temporary position, but some of the others are more long-term. Going along with COVID-19, um, a lot of you might have been interested in contact tracing positions. Those, um, a lot of those have popped up within different counties. Um, Marion County just closed their positions, but a lot of counties are hiring because they need people to be able to um, do contact tracing. And it says that they will provide um, training. And so um, this one actually just says a four-year degree within public health, and they would provide the training. And it'd be a great way to start getting experience. And um, some of these positions I've noticed are remote. So that could be something that would be a good fit. If you are coming from a different background and you want to gain experience before applying for jobs, um, another great option is AmeriCorps. And I personally did AmeriCorps when I graduated with my bachelor's. And it's typically for a year. And within the state of Oregon, um, AmeriCorps VISTA, which is in Volunteers in Service to America, they have paired with um, Oregon Health Authority and they have positions all throughout the state. And they actually are hiring right now for August start dates. The one thing about AmeriCorps, it's a government um, position. Um, it is considered somewhat voluntary. So the stipend, you do get a monthly stipend, but it's fairly um, minimal. You do, um, when you're done with your one year um, commitment, you do, you can choose either um, an education award or a stipend, a larger chunk of money. Um, when you're doing it, your loans are deferred and you get health insurance and you usually get your trainings paid for. And again, it's a great way if you're coming from a different field to pick up a really rich experience. And these are just some examples within Oregon. There are actually 13 positions that um, are listed on the website. And I have that link in my resources as well. And it, um, just some examples, um, COOS, Health and Wellness, Breastfeeding and Health Equity. That's a position. Marion County Emergency Management is a position within Salem. United Way in Lane County. And then um, the Oregon Rural Practice Based Research Network, which is actually based out of um, Portland. Um, those are just some examples. If you are thinking of going more abroad, Peace Corps would be a great fit. I listed just one example of uh, placement, which is focused on HIV AIDS education, and it works um, with the community to provide trainings and education and creating programs on HIV AIDS. And then another thing I always like to point out is if no matter where you are in your career, I think networking is always a great thing to do. And if you're not familiar with LinkedIn, it's a professional networking platform, which you can create your own um, profile. And it allows you to not only network with people, but this is an area that I've noticed a lot of organizations are posting jobs. And so if you have been looking for jobs, um, doing searches, um, you can certainly use positions as search keywords, like health specialist, health promotion specialist. But um, LinkedIn, I've seen a lot of organizations um, posting jobs where you can actually apply through LinkedIn. And again, that would be a great way to um, see what's out there as far as positions. And then I just want to um, reiterate that I have resources listed here. I have all the links for the ones that I've mentioned. And I will post these because I think it's helpful to be able to just kind of see what's out there, um, see what you're interested in. And um, there are a lot of jobs that are still becoming increasing in demand within public health. So it's definitely a field that is growing. And I hope you all. Um, I have found this beneficial and are interested in public health. So I look forward to seeing what questions you have. Hi, Karen. Hello. Hi. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you so very much for that overview. We have uh, three questions so far in oh, the good. Q&A. And so I'll give you, I want to make one comment while you get a, a tiny opportunity to take a deep <laughs> breath, I think. Uh, and then we'll get right to those questions. And um, please uh, keep, keep them coming, y'all. They're good. I think um, before I go to the question, the one thing I want to say is, um, gosh, that's a breadth of options, right? There's so much to do in public health. And um, you're right, and I want to draw back to teamwork, leadership, written and verbal communication, program development, uh, and, and that um, sort of go get them, get things done kind of attitude that really does sort of shape uh, the discipline. I think public health is a team sport and there's a lot, um, there's a lot to be done and a lot of um, transferable qualities, you know, from other, other occupations that folks can bring into the fold. Um, let's, you ready for the first question? I'm ready. <laughs> All right, let's do them. Um, let's do them in order and we're, we'll do a tiny bit rapid fire. So, um, okay. audience, please don't, please don't disappoint. Keep these questions <laughs> coming. Um, yeah, please so, ask questions. Yeah. What are some considerations for someone interested in making a midlife career change into public health? So, for example, from education or student affairs with an eye towards getting a PhD. Oh, so what are some considerations in terms of deciding on an area to focus on with getting a PhD? Sure. I just want Okay, um, so that's great. If you have a background in education and it sounds like you want to um, perhaps pursue a PhD, um, something I think is really, really helpful is um, to start looking, and thank you for actually asking this question because on my resources, I listed Association of Schools and Programs of Public Health, and it's ASPPH. And they list public health programs. And I would say for, in terms of consideration, something I think that is helpful no matter where anybody's at is to look at examples of jobs and see what are some jobs you're interested in. And um, if you're interested in coming from education to public health, um, I think it's great to go to different universities and their PhD programs, and they should be listing examples of positions that people graduate and go on to do with degrees. And so, um, for example, if you are deciding, should I go on to get a PhD in health promotion? Um, you could be able to see what people have done with those PhD degrees and what positions they, they have gotten. Um, I do want to mention some other considerations, and I'm not sure if this is what you're thinking of, but um, if you are thinking of making the leap to get a PhD, I highly recommend looking at the different programs at universities, talking to some of the professors, and also seeing if you can see what their research is, and seeing what they provide as far as career tracks. They should be posting positions. But the other thing that I think, um, in terms of considering uh, schools, I really recommend um, finding out which ones offer graduate teaching assistantships and teaching research assistantships. That is something that can give you a lot of experience going through your program. And so if you are switching over to public health, you probably would be a great fit for a graduate teaching assistant. And schools vary in that. I did it when I went to OSU and the graduate teaching assistants in um, the PhD program, they actually teach their own classes. In other universities, you might be more on the grading side, but it gives you a lot of experience before you graduate. And <laughs> the bonus here is um, it covers your tuition. And that can be a huge when you're thinking of a PhD program. So if you are thinking of honestly applying to PhD programs, funding, um, financing it is big. And so I would see which programs offer GTAs, how many, and you don't have to stay within that program. A lot of universities, including OSU, 
um, Student Health Services has assistantships. So you could look around the university, but that's a great way to finance your education. But the other considerations, I think it's huge talking to people. So I would say talk to professors, talk to people, get an idea of um, the, what that particular um, PhD would entail. So I hope I answered your question. Yeah, that's helpful, Karen. We have a related question uh, that's, um, do you have any career advice for people who are currently working on a PhD in public health, but maybe rethinking a career in academia? And um, I, I will admit that my first job with a PhD was as an executive director. I'm surprised I landed in academia, so I may have thoughts, but any tips for finding non-academic careers for PhD grads? Ooh, yes, I, I'm gonna go into my wheelhouse and say internships and experiential learning. I would say um, if you are thinking of doing a non-academic career, which a lot of people in public health do, they go to nonprofits, um, they can go to the government. Um, I would say to, on my list of um, common employers, I would say look them up and, and see which ones might be um, having experiential learning opportunities, internships. A lot of PhD students will do that um, as they're working on their dissertation, is um, try to gain some, either some real life experience or something else that was huge for me in narrowing down my career, which is informational interviews. So I would say look up um, health-based organizations that are interesting to you, that depending on what area of um, public health you're getting your PhD in, um, reach out to executive directors, reach out to um, researchers in, in the government and ask them, say, you know, I'm getting my PhD, would you be willing to ans ask, answer a few questions of mine that I have, I'm interested in your position and I'd like to learn more about it. People are really gracious about um, giving their time to tell you more about what they do. And that I really found helpful because they can tell you what they find most satisfying and they can tell you what is most challenging. And they can also give you tips about um, are there additional things you can do um, to kind of stand out and be competitive and when applying for those positions. So yeah, absolutely. If you're rethinking a, an academic career, there are lots of options. And I would say um, reach out to health-based organizations in the community. Um, I would self-reflect to identify what are your passions when, within public health? What resonates with you? What is your drive for getting the PhD, for wanting to make a difference? Is it wanting to work with certain populations? Is it wanting to change policy? And that can kind of guide you to um, what would be some organizations that you would want to reach out to. So good luck. There are lots of options. There are, there are lots of options. Um, I think public health consulting firms too, uh, you know, there are lots of big ones in major cities that are all the time looking for, you know, government contracts or things like that. So they often are hiring folks with PhDs to be sort of hybrid, you know, project directors with research skills and writing skills and uh, all the critical thought, you know, that you, that those kinds of skills that you get in a PhD program. We have another question here. Um, is it possible to study while working full-time in another field? For example, considering the need to build experiences by volunteering and doing internships, et cetera. Yeah, I think that's a great way. If you're in a different field and you want to pick up experience, um, the thing I find is um, organizations are very flexible. And I think that is a phenomenal way to pick up um, experience in public health is reaching out. And right now, a lot of organizations are remote. And so that could be a great way to work around a full-time job is um, pick up some remote volunteering. Um, or you could do it in person. Internships, right now there are a lot of internships that are um, remote as well, or they're hybrid, <laughs> where they're a combination. But um, 
most organizations are really flexible in terms of time commitment. And so I think that I am a big believer in experiential learning. I think that gives you so much um, inside information in terms of what you like, what you don't like, um, what surprises you that you didn't realize you like. A, a lot of people, they don't even realize until they start doing volunteering or internships what is possible. So I would really recommend any type of experiential learning. Thank you, Karen. Uh, we, I am mindful of time. We've got about eight minutes before the top of the hour, so um, uh, nine minutes, eight or nine. So folks, please keep, um, keep sending your questions if you have them or follow-ups if needed. Uh, here's a new question. This is from an incoming MPH student uh, hey. who will be in health promotion, health behavior. Oh, That's good. Excellent. Karen, um, do you have advice for an incoming MPH student in health promotion, health behavior, interested in pursuing a career in sexual health? Ooh, I love it, I love it, I love it. Yes, um, <laughs> I am very passionate about health promotion and um, congratulations on getting into the MPH program. and. I'm so excited that you have identified an interest and sexual health is a wonderful area. And yes, I do have some recommendations. Um, the first one that comes to mind right off the bat is student health services. And um, I would say reaching out to them to see if, if you're an MPH student, you might actually see if they have any graduate teaching assistantships, but um, they have a lot of wonderful programs in the area of sexual health. Um, it depends on also if um, what your interests are within sexual health, because um, there are some great nonprofit organizations within Oregon that I would recommend getting involved in. And I love your question, and I love the fact that you're incoming and you're thinking about this, because um, I wish I could reach out to incoming students more, because I think as you're starting, that's the best because then you can really start to gain experience and vary it. So um, with sexual health, um, if you're interested in Planned Parenthood, you could reach out to them. They have offices within Oregon. Um, there's some great um, HIV alliances down in Eugene and they do some great work. Um, they are one that has, uh, they tend to get a lot of volunteers um, and they're very flexible. Up in um, the Portland area is Oregon Health Authority, and they would be wonderful. Um, they do um, programs around HPV prevention, um, and th there could be many ways to get involved. My recommendations would be to, to pace yourself, but I think getting real experience, um, it could be volunteering, it could be, um, and when I say volunteering, it doesn't have to be continuous. You could do one-time volunteering programs or opportunities. But for you, I would really recommend, um, with being in the MPH program, you'll have to do an internship at the end of your two years. So I would say gain experience, um, reach out. Um, I, would, I would recommend getting involved in OPHA. Um, they're phenomenal and they're, they have their virtual conference in October. <laughs> And hands down, they're gonna have sessions on sexual health. And that by, might be a way for you to network because um, a lot of times it, at conferences, even with this one being virtual, you can get names of people and then you can send them an email and say, I saw your presentation on sexual health and it really interested me. Do you have ways I can get involved as a master's student? And um, I think identifying what your interests are within sexual health, gaining experience, not feeling pressure because you're incoming <laughs> to really have everything figured out. Um, enjoy the time to be able to explore different opportunities. But I, I think um, when people get done with their degrees um, and they're applying for jobs, having so much experience will really benefit you. So. There's, um, a, and I'm being mindful of time because I can go on and on, but there's a phenomenal book, um, Dr. S Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. 
And one of the habits is start with the end in mind. So where do you see yourself and then work back? And that can be a great way to identify um, some ways to pick up experiences. And it could also be with transferable skills because I agree with Allison, those you cannot go wrong with. So um, more communication skills, leadership, taking leadership positions as a graduate student. Um, I know APHA has a grad, graduate, they have a student um, section and that could be a great way to get involved. So I would say varying your interests too, getting involved in a lot of different things, not overwhelming yourself, but I think if you end your MPH and you have a solid two years of experience, that'll really benefit you. So good uh, luck, I'm excited. You'll have to come by and see, say hi to me. Uh, you know what, Karen, that was exactly, I just want to make um, one point about coming, two things actually, about coming to say hello. We have an Office of Student Success that has remarkable advisors, yeah. and they are resources for all of you incoming students. We're going to answer one last question from an incoming public health undergrad in a second. Ooh, yeah. So please visit your Office of Student Success. Um, and also the website, the College of Public Health and Human Sciences website, health.oregonstate.edu. And all of our faculty are listed, all of their interests are listed. Yeah. You can look at their uh, biographies and send a note, reach out to say, hi, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm coming into the school, these are my interests, do you have a few minutes uh, to meet with me? And I think you'll get, um, you'll find a lot of open doors. Um, last question, I think, uh, we have just a minute left. Um, any advice for an incoming public health undergrad who's interested in public health and economics? Fantastic oh, combination. That is a great combination. So economics, um, absolutely. I would say, hands down, get involved right away. And um, this actually is a great, um, it kind of goes off of what Allison was saying with um, going to the College of Public Health website, um, there are a lot of different clubs. And um, I'm guessing you're choosing health management policy. <laughs> and there um, are some great clubs um, tailored towards HMP. There's also the Public Health Club. But I would say um, getting involved in those. And then um, as an undergrad, I think uh, I highly recommend doing experiential learning and I'm happy to connect with you. Um, there are some great places in Corvallis. Corvallis Clinic comes to mind because um, there's a, a preceptor that does a great internship in finance. Also, I had a student interested in economics and she actually was at Student Health Services on campus and she got a phenomenal opportunity, um, more kind of behind the scenes with, um, working on the economic side so and budgeting so um i would say get involved um i'm happy to provide you with some suggestions but coming in as an undergrad um get involved um, in clubs and experiential learning so good luck we're excited to have you that's great oregon is a really special place in terms of our uh our college of public health and human sciences with extension faculty across the state we have wow. healthcare transformation here in Oregon where we're thinking all the time about value and we've got public health modernization and state statute that, uh, you know, we have folks in health and healthcare and public health really working together uh, to think through what's next and what the future will look like. 